Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Ajay Solkhe, presently working as Assistant Professor, University School of Management, Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra, Haryana. Upon completion of the module, the student should be able to understand the meaning, definition and significance of trade unions in general, major objectives and functions of the trade unions and what are the theoretical foundations of trade unionism, what are their roles, their forms and the various classifications of trade unions. Before moving further, we should concentrate on what exactly trade union is. According to Webbs, a trade union is a continuous association of wage earners for the purpose of maintaining and improving the conditions of their working lives. Under the Trade Union Act of 1926, the term is defined as any combination, whether temporary or permanent, formed primarily for the purpose of regulating the relations between workers and employers or for imposing restrictive conditions on any trade or business and includes any federation of two or more unions. Let us examine the definition of trade union in parts. Trade union is an association either of employees or employers or of independent workers. It is relatively a permanent formation of workers. It is not a temporary or casual combination of workers. It is formed for securing certain economic like better wages, better working and living conditions and social like educational, recreational, medical, respect for individual benefits to members. Collective strength offers a sort of insurance cover to members to fight against irrational, arbitrary and illegal actions of employers. Members can share their feelings, exchange notes and fight the employer quite effectively whenever he goes off the track. A more recent and non-legislative definition of a union is an organization of workers acting collectively who seek to protect and promote their mutual interest through collective bargaining. With regard to the forms of trade union, the very first of all we have the classical trade unions. A trade union's main objective is to collectively protect the interest of its members in a given socio-economic political system. Trade unions are the expressions of the needs, aspirations and wishes of the working class. Secondly, we have neoclassical. It goes beyond their classical objectives and tries to improve other wider issues like tax reliefs, raising saving rates, etc. Revolutionary change in the system, establishing the rule of working class even through violence, use of force, etc. Functions of a trade union. The functions of a trade union has been categorized into four heads. One is militant or protective or intra-mutual functions. Then we have social functions. Another set of functions is political functions. And lastly, we have fraternal or extra-moral functions. Looking at the militant or protective or intra-moral functions, these functions include protecting the workers' interest, that is hike in wages, providing more benefits, job security, etc. through collective bargaining and direct action such as strike and giraffes. Fraternal or extramural function. These functions include providing financial and non-financial assistance to workers during the period of strikes and lockouts, extension of medical facilities during slackness and casualties, provision of education, recreation, recreational and housing facilities, provision of social and religious benefits, etc. Talking about the political functions, these functions include affiliating the union to a political party, helping the political party in enrolling members, collecting donations, seeking the help of political parties during the periods of strikes and lockouts. Social functions. These functions include carrying out social service activities, discharging social responsibilities through various sections of the society like educating the customers, etc. Regarding the objectives of trade union, we have eight prominent set of objectives. Very first is wage and salaries. Second is working conditions. Third is discipline. Fourth is personal policies. Fifth is welfare. Then is employee-employer relations. Second, lastly, a negotiating machinery and lastly, safeguarding organization health and the interest of the industry. Very first of all, we have wages and salaries. The subject which drew the major attention of the trade union is wages and salaries. Secondly, working conditions. Trade unions with a view to safeguard the health of the workers demand the management to provide all the basic facilities such as lighting and ventilation, sanitation, 
रेस्ट रूम्स सेफ्टी इक्विपमेंट वेल डिस्चार्जिंग हजारडस ड्यूटीज ड्रिंकिंग वाटर रिफ्रेशमेंट मिनिमम वर्किंग आवर्स लीव एंड रेस्ट हॉलीडेज विद पे जॉब सेटिस्फेक्शन सोशल सिक्योरिटी बेनिफिट्स एंड अदर वेलफेयर मेजर्स With regard to discipline, trade unions not only conduct negotiations in respect of the items with which their working conditions may be improved, but also protect the workers from the clutches of the management whenever workers become the victims of management's unilateral acts and disciplinary policies. This victimization may take the form of penal transfers, suspensions, dismissals, and similar other actions. While discussing the personal policies, trade unions may fight against improper implementation of personal policies in respect of recruitment, selection, promotion, transfers, training, and other HR aspects. In the heads of welfare, as stated earlier, trade unions are meant for the welfare of workers. Trade union works as a guide, consulting authority, and cooperates in overcoming the personal problems of the workers. On account of employer-employee relations. Harmonious relations between the employees and employer are sine qua non for industrial peace. A trade union always strives for achieving this objective. On account of negotiating machinery, negotiations include the proposals made by one party and the counter proposals of the other. This process continues until the parties reach an agreement. Thus, negotiations are based on the give and take principle. And lastly. on safeguarding organization health and in the interest of the industry organization health can be diagnosed by methods evolved for grievance redressal and techniques adopted to reduce the rate of absenteeism and labor turnover and to improve the employee relations what exactly is the role of a trade union in the society as far as for the employer is concerned adopting the model of professor clark kerr unions assume the following roles sectional bargainer class bargainer agents of state partners in social control unions role business oriented role unions as change agent the very first of all we have sectional bargainers the interest of the workers at plant industry national level multiplicity of unions craft unions white collar unions etc class bargainer unions representing the interest of the class as a whole in france agriculture unions federation of unions civil servant unions are examples of this kind agents of the state as in erstwhile ussr ensuring targets of production at fixed price in the 1974 railway strike intuc stood behind the government and its agents partners in social control co determinator in germany also some examples are found in holland france italy and sweden some half hearted attempts are being made in india also unions roles which can be termed as enemies of economic system driven by the political ideologies than by the business compulsions leftist unions want to change the fundamental structure of the economy and want to have control over it therefore they encourage high wages high bonus etc without any consideration for the health of the economy business oriented roles in this role where unions consider the interest of the organization along with the workers they think that their members fate is inextricably linked with that of organization and they swim or sink together lastly unions as change agent here they lead the changes rather than be led by them thus performing the very pioneering role classification of trade unions the trade unions are classified on the basis of three broader phenomena one is ideology another is trade and third is agreement on the basis of ideology we have three kind of unions one is revolutionary unions another is reformist or so called welfare unions and third is uplift unions on the basis of trade they are classified into four kinds one is craft unions second is general union third is blue collar or white collar unions and fourth industrial unions on the basis of agreement we have closed shop union shop preferential shop maintenance shop agency shop and open shop let us explain all of these typologies very first of all classification based on the ideology the firstly revolutionary unions believe in destruction of existing social economic order and creation of a new one 
they want a shift in power and authority and use of force reformist or welfare unions they work for changes and reforms within the existing socio political framework of the society it's a totally a european model third is uplift unions they advocate extensive reforms well beyond the area of working condition that is change in taxation system elimination of poverty and similar other things the classification based on trade very first we have craft unions many unions have memberships and jurisdiction based on the trades they represent the most narrow in membership is the craft union which represents only the members certified in a given craft or trade such as pipe fitting carpentry and clerical work although very common in the western world craft unions are not common in countries like india and sri lanka general unions at the other extreme in terms of the range of the workers represented in the general union which has members drawn from all the trades most unions in india and sri lanka are in this category blue collar and white collar unions another common delineation of unions based on the trades or crafts is that between so called blue collar workers and white collar workers unions representing the workers employed on the production floor or outdoor trades such as in construction work they are called as blue collar unions in contrast those employees in shops and offices and who are not in management grades and perform clerical and allied functions they are called white collar workers industrial unions in addition trade unions may be categorized on the basis of the industries in which they are employed examples of industrial unions are workers engaged in agriculture or forestry hence agriculture labor unions or forest workers unions are a example of industrial unions let us look at the classification based on the agreement very first is closed shop where management and union agree that the union should have sole responsibility and authority for the recruitment of workers it is called a closed shop agreement the worker joins the union to become an employee of the shop the taft hartley act of 1947 bans closed shop agreements in the usa although they still exist in the construction and printing trades sometimes the closed shop is also called the hiring hall union shop where there is agreement that all new recruits must join the union within a fixed period after employment it is called a union shop in the united states of america some states are declared to be having right to work preferential shop when a union member is given preference in filling a vacancy such an agreement is called preferential shop maintenance shop in this type of arrangement there is no compulsory membership in the union before or after recruitment however if the employee chooses to become a member after recruitment his membership remains compulsory right throughout his tenure of employment with that particular employer this is called a maintenance of membership shop or maintenance shop then is agency shop in terms of the agreement between management and the union a non union member has to pay the union a sum equivalent to a member subscription in order to continue in employment with the employer this is called an agency shop open shop membership in a union is in no way compulsory or obligatory either before or after recruitment in such organizations sometimes there is no union in rot this is the least desirable form for unions this is referred to as open shop theoretical foundations of the trade unions there is no one single theory of trade unionism but many contributors to these theories are revolutionaries like karl marx frederick engels civil servants like sydney webb academics like common and hoxie and labor leaders like michel with regard to the theories of trade unionism we have many theories the prominent are the webb's theory of industrial democracy tenenbaum's theory of man versus machine hoxie's functional classification of unionism pearlsman theory of the scarcity consciousness of manual workers simon's theory of monopolistic anti democratic trade unionism michel's economic protection theory of trade unionism commons environment theory cole's theory of trade union control of industry cole's theory of union control of industry political revolutionary theory of labor movement of marx and engels 
पॉलिटिकल रेवोल्यूशनरी थियोरी ऑफ लेबर मूवमेंट ऑफ मार्क्स एंड एंगल्स द थ्योरी इज बेस्ड ऑन एडम स्मिथ्स थियोरी ऑफ लेबर वैल्यू इट शॉर्ट टर्म पर्पज इज टू एलिमिनेट कॉम्पिटिशन अमंग द लेबर एंड द अल्टीमेट पर्पज इज टू ओवर थ्रो कैपिटलिस्ट बिजनेसमैन ट्रेड यूनियन इज अ प्योर एंड सिंपल क्लास स्ट्रगल एंड द प्रोलीटेरियंस हैव नथिंग टू लूज बट देर चेंज एंड देर इज अ वर्ल्ड टू विन According to the Webb's theory of industrial democracy, Webb's books Industrial Democracy is the bible of trade unionism. According to Webb, trade unionism is an extension of democracy from political sphere to industrial sphere. Webb agreed with Karl Marx that trade unionism is a class struggle and modern capitalist state is a transitional phase which will lead to democratic socialism. He considered collective bargaining as the process which strengthens the labor According to the Kohle's theory of union control of industry, Kohle's views are given in his book World of Labor, 1930. His views are somewhere in between Webb and the Karl Marx. He agrees that unionism is class struggle and the ultimate is the control of the industry by labor and not revolution as predicted by Marx. Commons environment theory, he was skeptical of generalizations and believed only that which would could be proved by evidence he agreed that collective bargaining was an instrument of class struggle but he summarized that ultimately there will be a partnership between employers and employees michel's economic protection theory of trade unionism michel who was a labor leader completely rejected individual bargaining according to him unions afford economic protections too Simon's theory of monopolistic anti-democratic trade unionism he denounced trade unionism as a monopoly founded on violence and he claimed monopoly power has no use save abuse next is pearlman theory of the scarcity consciousness of manual workers pearlman rejected the idea of class consciousness as an explanation for the origin of the trade union movement but substituted it with what he called job consciousness according to him working people in reality felt an urge towards collective control of their employment opportunities but hardly towards similar control of industry pearlman observed that three dominant factors emerge from the rich historical data the capacity or incapacity of the capitalist system to survive as a ruling group in the face of revolutionary attacks the source of the anti capitalist influences being primarily from among the intellectuals in any society the most vital factor in the labor situation was the trade union movement but pearlman also felt that a theory of labor movement should include a theory of the psychology of the laboring men next in line is hoxie's functional classification of unionism he classified unionism on the basis of its function his classifications were business unionism for protecting the interest of various craftsmen uplift unionism for the purpose of contributing better life such as association of sales engineer and similar other kinds revolutionary unionism which is eager to replace existing social order and lastly predatory unionism which rest on the support of the others tenenbaum's theory of man versus machine in 1951 according to him union is formed in reaction to alienation and loss of community in an individualistic and unfeeling society in his words the union returns to the workers his society which he left behind him when he migrated from a rural background to the anonymity of an urban industrial relation the union gives the worker a fellowship and a value system that he shares with others like him institutionally the trade union movement is an unconscious effort to harness the rift of our time and reorganize it around the cohesive identity that men working together always achieve friends i hope you have understood the contents well you can also refer to other quadrants of this module for testing your knowledge and having some more input on theme of the module happy learning